morning, Northwoods Baptist Church. Happy Friday. I'm so thankful that we could be here and just uh, spend some time in God's Word today. We're looking here in Psalm 119 in verses number 37 and 38. Uh, listen or read along as I read these out loud. Psalm 119, 37, it says, Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. Establish thy word unto thy servant, who is devoted to to thy fear. Wow, what a thought. Uh, what a verse here. We've been looking at the man of God, the man of the word, and what it looks like whenever a servant, whenever a person is uh, a, a diligent student of the word of God, the four different types of man that that person is. We, we looked at the sojourner, the soldier. Today we're looking at the servant, uh, the servant uh, here in verse 37 and 38. The first thing we see is the desire of the psalmist. He wanted to be a discerning servant. He wanted to be a discerning servant. Look at verse 37. Um, turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity and quicken thou me in the way. Turn away from my eyes. You know, there are some times whenever we need to just look the other way. Whenever we need to stop looking at different things, uh, our eye gates can be a huge source of temptation in our life and uh, things that we see, whether it's uh, covetousness or uh, other things that go on in our life that we see. Um, we all need uh, to be able to guard that eye gate. Uh, that eye gate that takes place. And right here he says in verse 37, um, Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity quicken thee. We need to be made alive. We need new life in Christ. And we need that strength in order to turn our eyes away from the vanities of this world. Vanities surround us. Whether it's on a screen, television, computer, phone, or otherwise. Uh, whether the vanities are taking place. Um, in the things that we look at in our community or out in the just out and about walking around. Um, vanities surround us everywhere. I'm reminded of John chapter 8. In John chapter 8, Jesus gives us a great example of what to do and how to, how to guard our eyes. In John 8, there was a woman that was um, caught in taking an adultery and caught in the very act. And they brought her before Jesus and they threw her on the ground before him and told him to judge. And Jesus you remember what he did in John chapter 8? He looked at the ground. His attention became focused on, I'm going to divert my eyes. And he looks on the ground. And his the, that ground became amazingly uh, uh, interested, interesting as he began to draw and write on the ground. He never once looked at her. And I imagine she was very grateful as he began to write there in the dirt. The next time you see Jesus looking, he is looking, but he's looking through the men who had brought her looking through the guilty party and seeing who they are and who they who they were. And then finally, he looked to her in compassion, and uh, he offered her forgiveness. And he says, um, oh, woman, where are thy accusers? And then his answer is, woman, uh, neither do I accuse thee. Go and sin no more. So he gave her compassion. He showed her mercy through the middle of all that. Uh, we need to have our eye gate controlled. The psalmist wanted his eyes to be controlled, is what he desired. He prayed that his eyes would be made, and not just controlled, but verse 37, Turn away from my eyes from beholding vanity. Quicken me, thou me, in thy way. His wanted his eyes to be focused on his master, the way of his master, to be focused on what it should be focused on, the, the way of the master. What an amazing thought. We see a discerning servant realizing where he's wrong and where he needs to be made right. The next thing we see in verse 38 is we see a devoted servant. Notice his devotion here. Establish thy word unto thy servant, who is devoted to thy fear. Establish thy, uh, thy fear, devoted to thy fear. The word awe is something we don't use very often, and we misuse it sometimes by saying something is awesome or amazing. But the word awe, it... it um, it's a word that has to do with reverential fear and reverential treatment. This psalmist here, he was in awe of his master, awe of his master's way. Uh, awe is a reverential fear that comes as a result of looking at his word. You know, it's been said that there are three ways that we can read the Bible and three ways that people respond to reading in the Bible. Some people read the Bible and they forsake it. They say that, ah, oh, this isn't for me. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'll follow how I want to follow. So there are those that read and those that forsake it. There are those that read and those that forget. No, it's not that they forget on purpose, and it's not that it was ever their intention to forget, but they get so sidetracked with the events of the day and the things going on in life or situations that have to happen or, hey, look, here's a brand new pen. And because of that, they can forget what they've read in the Word of God. They don't actually apply it to their life. And then there are those that read and fear. 
Those that read in fear, those that read the Word of God and recognize this is speaking directly to me. This is a message from me, for me, from the God of the universe. Um, they recognize that the Word of God deals with the real issues in life. It recognizes that the Word of God it really exists for a purpose. The psalmist, he stands with those who fear God's Word, those who have a respect for it, those who recognize that it's the final authority on life, and it is um, the the litmus test or the bar that we're going to be judged by one day. So in recognizing his fear, notice his prayer at the beginning of verse 38. Establish thy word until thy servants. God's word is forever established in heaven, the psalmist says. And here what he is saying is he wants his word to not only be established in heaven, but to be established in him, to put it in his heart. I love this idea. Him as a servant said, God, I want your word to be ingrained in my heart. The blessingness of this is that this kind of service is not one-sided. It's not just the servant serving continually. It's as he begins to study the word of God, that servant learns and grows to depend on the promise of God. But not only the promise of God and the word of God, but the God of the word, the God of those promises. He finds him to be trustworthy. So today I pray that you will ask God for a discerning spirit, a discerning heart, a discerning mind, that you will be devoted to God's word, following it, knowing it, establishing it, but then choosing to fear it. Fear it in such a way that you apply it to your life and you use it. I'm so very thankful for all that God's done and for our opportunity to walk and to follow him. Today, as you go throughout your day or before we go on, I challenge you to take a few minutes to pray. Pray for your family. Pray for your children if you have children. If you don't have a family yet, maybe you're single, pray for your spouse, the spouse that God has out there for you. Pray for your future children. Pray that you will be, God will be using the time you have right now to prepare you for those future children. Pray for the salvation of your family. Uh, pray for the salvation of your children. Pray for their sanctification, that they can be set aside more to God and do what's necessary in your own life to help them to be sanctified. Pray for their shining that as a testimony, as a light in the community. Pray that they will be witnesses. I'm so thankful for the opportunities I have to be with my kids and take them to the store. Uh, they continually are a blessing and a witness to other people as we see them. I'm thankful for that boldness that they have. Pray for their safety. Um, pray for the safety and the health of our families. I'm so very thankful for God's goodness and His mercy. Um, but we're not guaranteed tomorrow or any other day. So let's pray for the safety and pray for our families. Thank you so much for all that you've done. Thank you for tuning in and being part of today's video. If you have any questions, please feel free to send me a message directly. If you have any comments, we'd love to hear them. And you can send that uh, directly to my email. It's chuck underscore Nicholson at hotmail.com. You can reply by the a Remind app, or you could also apply, reply um, oh, by sending me a direct text message if you have my number. So thank you so much once again for tuning in, and God bless you. Have a wonderful day.